Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm going to give you a high-level overview of how blue-green deployments work. The blue-green deployment strategy is one of several strategies that you can use to upgrade an application to its latest version. So imagine that you have an environment in which your software is running. Uh, in this case, we have the blue environment indicated by the color blue. And within that environment, your application is running on uh, maybe multiple containers, uh, or it could be running on virtual machines, or it's running on bare metal uh, hardware. In this example, uh, the environment represents a cluster of virtual machines. And these virtual machines could be deployed on a single bare metal server, or maybe they're distributed across a couple of bare metal servers. But essentially, this is a cluster, uh, a logical group of virtual machines that are hosting your application. And when a client makes a request to your application, let's say they access it uh, via example.com, uh, that request is going to hit a load balancer, and then the load balancer is going to um, direct their request to this environment, which uh, I don't represent it here, but there'll be a reverse proxy here uh, sitting in front of this cluster of VMs that'll basically be doing maybe some sort of like route, round robin uh, load balancing to uh, each VM that's hosting your application. And so in this environment, we're running a version 1.0 of your application on these virtual machines. In a blue-green deployment, what happens is we actually make an exact copy of the blue environment. And then I'm going to change the color of this cloned environment uh, to green. Now this cloned environment, the green environment, should be exactly the same. It should be identical to the blue environment, except that it's running on uh, different infrastructure. It could be running on different bare metal servers, uh, in this case, let's imagine that it's running in a, a different virtual machine cluster, and that virtual machine cluster also has uh, a reverse proxy that is accepting requests and doing a round-robin uh, load balancing to your application that's hosted on each one of these virtual machines. And for simplicity's sake, let's imagine that uh, this VM cluster is hosted on a single bare metal server, and the entry point to this virtual machine cluster is uh, an IP address, the IP address of, uh, of this bare metal server. So this server would have its own IP address. I'm uh, just for brevity's sake, I'm just going to say uh, IP2. And uh, this would be connecting to whatever port the reverse proxy is running on that can route traffic to the uh, virtual machines that are running on top of this uh, bare metal server. Okay, so in the uh, in the blue environment, we have the first IP, and then in the green environment, we have IP two. So the first step in the blue green deployment process is to make an identical copy of your production environment. In our case, it means that uh, we're going to be uh, replicating our environment to a new cluster of virtual machines. But um, you know, this could be also applied in the context of Kubernetes, maybe uh, the duplication of the production cluster is creating a second identical cluster or making some sort of logical separation within a single cluster to create uh, a two identical production environments where your application is deployed to uh, containers. The cloned green environment is often referred to as a standby. And uh, depending on the situation and whether or not uh, your organization can support the cost, uh, this standby environment may uh, just always be available. So uh, your organization stands up this cloned environment uh, to act as basically a failover environment in case the blue environment fails for whatever reason. And these might be physically separate. These environments might be physically separated. So the servers that are hosting uh, your <clears throat> application in the green environment may be located in a separate data center, or they may be located in the same da data center, but a different uh, hall in the data center. There might be some sort of physical separation between these environments to uh, create redundancy and reduce the chances of the application not being available 
if one environment fails. If you have more ephemeral compute resources, then you may not keep this green environment around uh, permanently. It might just be a temporary environment that's spun up to uh, just deploy a new release of software. Uh, so this really depends on your specific uh, situation. Regardless if your uh, green environment is a standby, a permanent standby, or just ephemeral to deploy a new version of software, the next step in the blue-green deployment is to deploy the latest version of your application to this green environment. So let's say instead of version 1.0, um, we have version uh, 1.1. And so we deploy version 1.1 to this green environment. Once you've deployed the latest version of software to the green environment, uh, the only difference uh, aside from the upgrade of software uh, is really the, the traffic that uh, the environment is getting. So the green environment is receiving no traffic. The blue environment is still getting all of the user requests since it's the uh, currently the production environment uh, that is active. So although you can test the functionality of your um, application in the green environment, you'll also want to do performance and stress testing in this environment as well before uh, switching over and making this the active environment. Because it's possible that your application is operating totally fine when it's just two or three testers that are testing out the application in this environment, but maybe uh, once you, if you have like, you know, a thousand active users uh, suddenly switch over to this environment, maybe the application under uh, normal traffic patterns uh, doesn't function as intended. So it's definitely important to do not only uh, functional testing, but non-functional testing and performance and stress testing of your application in this green environment uh, before uh, making it the active uh, environment for your application. So assuming your tests of the new version of your application went well in the green environment, the next step would be to uh, switch over uh, the load balancer. So the load balancer, instead of pointing to IP1, uh, it would then point to IP2. So uh, we would update this record. So this load balancer could be a service like AWS Route 53, which provides um, uh, load balancing capabilities as well as uh, DNS resolution. And so we would update the record of example.com uh, in the load balancer so that instead of pointing to IP1, it now points to IP2. And user requests uh, get routed to the green environment. Now, after performing the switchover to the green environment, you'll want to monitor the application uh, after performing the switchover to make sure that uh, the application is behaving and functioning uh, normally under uh, normal traffic patterns uh, that uh, your users are producing. The nice thing about a blue-green deployment is if for some reason uh, your application, you know, the latest version of, of software uh, of your application is not working in the green environment, to do a rollback, all you have to do is simply update the record in the load balancer to point back to IP1 so that you can uh, roll back to a previous version. So this particular deployment strategy has the benefit of easy rollbacks because it's basically a single change to uh, the the record for your application, the DNS record for your application, to point to the entry point uh, for your application. It might be an ingress controller to a Kubernetes cluster or some uh, other reverse proxy that is proxying traffic to a cluster of VMs. But let's say your deployment goes well and the application is functioning uh, normally with normal traffic patterns, uh, what do you do with the blue environment now? Well, if you're working with ephemeral compute resources, the blue environment might just be uh, deleted or disappear. Um, but if it's um, uh, more heavy infrastructure like a bare metal server or virtual machines, this might uh, be uh, uh, changed from the active environment to the standby environment. And so once we verified that version 1.1 works, uh, in production, we can then upgrade the blue environment uh, also to uh, version 1.1. And now when we make an additional upgrade to, let's say, 
version 1.2, our blue environment now becomes the uh, kind of test environment for uh, the latest version of 1.2. And at the same time, if this is not an ephemeral environment, uh, this acts as a failover uh, identical environment of our production environment that we can utilize in the event that the green environment goes down, like maybe there's a fire at the data center or something like that. One thing to keep in mind, though, is if you're going to maintain uh, this exact copy, you know, this standby copy of your production environment, uh, that is going to cost more money because you're, you need the same amount of resources, uh, infrastructure, to support this as a standby that you can use in, in the event of a failover or to just switch, uh, switch over to it when you're upgrading, making this type of deployment. And then there can be other uh, smaller side effects when performing a switchover. For instance, you have uh, the cold start problem. So when users were making requests to uh, the blue environment that was running version 1.0, uh, your application might have cached hot data that was frequently requested by your users. And so when you switch over to the green environment, uh, where your application is running, all of the caches for your application are cold. They don't have the data that was most frequently requested by your users. Um, so this could be a problem at, at initially when you first uh, deploy the, when you first do the switchover, uh, users might see requests taking longer for, uh, you know, data that they, they commonly requested. Uh, because the caches of your application are cold. In addition to having a simple rollback mechanism uh, when you're uh, utilizing blue-green deployments, uh, the other uh, benefit is that you're avoiding downtime uh, with this particular deployment. So traditionally, when you're uh, in the older days of software deployment, uh, what would happen is an in-place deployment where you would have a virtual machine or a bare metal server that's hosting version 1.0 of your application, and you schedule maintenance over the weekend uh, or sometime when you know users will not be using your application as often. And you have this uh, downtime window where you bring down the application and upgrade it to the latest version. Um, and in this particular deployment, you uh, in this particular strategy, you do not have uh, downtime there might be some errors users might see on the initial cutover, but in general, this should not really, this type of uh, strategy, deployment strategy, should not result in downtime. It's also worth noting that with this particular deployment strategy, um, you can utilize A B testing as well. Uh, so, you know, modern load balancers can be configured to route a percentage of traffic to one environment and, uh, the other percentage to the blue environment, right? So you can have 10% going to the green environment, 90% still going to the blue environment, and then you can monitor uh, metrics from both environments to determine whether or not uh, this version of your application is working uh, correctly. Another thing to keep in mind with this particular deployment strategy is if you have a database uh, that is supporting your application, if the application uh, changes to the application result in a change to the database schema, you would want to decouple the deployment of the schema with the deployment of the newer version of the application. So you would want to first deploy a backwards compatible, uh, an updated backwards compatible database schema so that it supports both version 1.1 and version 1.0, and then deploy the uh, updated version of the software in the green environment. I hope you enjoyed this high-level overview of how blue-green deployments work. If you did, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.